You know how uh, you, when you watch these reviews, the reviewers always tell you how unbiased they are? Well, uh, no such luck today, okay? I have to make a disclaimer that I'm very biased against casking. Every product from this company that I have touched has always had some kind of issue. Sometimes the product is okay, but there is some kind of issue somewhere. This monofilament here is actually really good. Very smooth, very supple, casts good, everything is good, but the label is wrong. It says 14 pound, but it's really 8. If the label was right, I would have ordered the diameter that I need and I would have been happy. This braid here is actually not bad. I really like it. The problem is, look at the nice black color. That's the same braid. So it does bleed a lot. And on top of that, it costs more than Daiwa J braid. Why am I buying Chinese braid that costs more than Daiwa? Their casking rover reel, I ordered one from Amazon. It had a grinding noise. I returned it. Uh, I, I ordered a second one. Uh, the clutch was uh, broken. I returned it and I gave up. This year at the Catfish Conference, they had three displays. Okay, if anybody from uh, the casking company is watching this review, check whoever you sent at the Catfish Conference this year, 2019, and ask them what were they doing with the casking rover displays because they had three displays there. All three of them were broken. Okay, I kid you not. And they might even remember me because I complained. Why don't you at least make sure your display reels are not defective? I tried their new catfish rod too at the catfish conference and uh, that rod had excellent components. The rubberized cork, the nice guides, a very light rod, uh, very rare for a catfish rod to be that light. I would have chosen all of the components myself except the action of the blank. It had a super soft tip and then the rest of the blank was perfectly stiff. So when you hook a fish, you end up fighting the fish only with the first one foot of the blank. That's it. The rest of the rod won't bend with anything under 100 pounds. So yeah, I am pretty biased against casking, but I still bought this reel because there just isn't too much competition in the low profile reels that are strong enough to fight a catfish. Pretty much these two reels here, this Daiwa Lexa CC if you want the clicker, no CC if you don't want the clicker, and this Abu Rivo Toro S, this one is 50, they have bigger one if you want, but pretty much these two reels are the only competition in this segment. Technically the Shimano Tranks is also in this category, but it doesn't have a clicker. And that reel is always $280-$300 and for Shimano products there are no discounts, not even on Black Friday. So at a price more than double you know, these reels here, I don't consider it direct competition. So anyway, after another unnecessarily long intro, here we are finally holding in the hand the Shimano, oh, Shimano, the Casking Capstan 300. Notice by the way, see, they spell Casking with K instead of C. And Capstan, I didn't know what Capstan means, so I googled it. And obviously Capstan, if spelled with C, is obviously a huge winch. But... Instead of a, like a, a normal winch where the, the winch is spinning in a vertical plane, that winch, a capstan, is spinning in horizontal plane, okay? Usually people are turning it. I have bought some expensive reels over the years and I have seen a lot of reels at fishing expos, you know, outside of the reels that I have purchased myself. But without a doubt, this real box here is the best box that I have seen in my life, okay? Very heavy, very thick, very rigid. 
Uh, the only way to describe this box is if you have ever bought an iPhone, you know how thick and hard the, the box from the iPhone is. It's almost like plastic, but it's not plastic. The same thing with this box. Super thick, super hard, and super heavy. And look, it does look like iPhone. I don't know, the materials, I would not be surprised if the vendor who makes the iPhone boxes got hired to make this box. All the papers inside, look, color printed paper. I mean, I have never seen Daiwa or Shimano with such a nice diagram. Everything in English, not in Japanese. I mean, color diagram, you can see your gears, you can see where your bearings are. I mean, the best diagram that I have seen in my life. I did try to clean the knobs for the review for the video, but I mean, there is no cleaning of EVA foam because it has these pores and once fish slime gets inside these pores, that's it. But otherwise, you know, besides the color, which I don't know, looks like a lot of Shimano reels, actually. The reel looks pretty good, don't you think so? I would say, and I'm biased, okay? Looks like the right dimensions, I don't know. I like the look of the reel, and I'm not someone who casts lures, but it's actually... I don't know, it feels really, it feels like nothing in my hand. It, it feels really small in your hand. So what do we have here? Well, oversized handle, 110 millimeter handle. Um, that's good, but the knobs, oh my God, very, very thick. If you are used to Daiwa and Shimano knobs, you are not gonna like these knobs, okay? Uh, of the three reels, my least favorite. I mean, this thing is too thick, but this is kind of a personal preference. And, you know, I don't know if there was a bad decision on the casking part, because I think most people who buy casking actually prefer thicker, thicker knobs. The drag adjustment clicks. And so do the other two, but not all reels I have click. The spool tension knob also clicks, okay? And, uh, okay, it doesn't click as crisp as on a Daiwa or a Yoga, but hey, it clicks and neither of the other two reels click, so one point for casking in, in this uh, respect. This thing here, Funny story, I could not figure what this was, okay? Because I don't read instructions or whatever, maybe it said somewhere on the box, but I couldn't figure what it was. I thought initially it was some kind of magnetic brake. You know, I bought the reel without seeing what the reel really has. I, I just bought it. And okay, it didn't do anything. I removed the side plate. This thing is not connected to anything. And I'm like, what could this be? So I contacted a couple of the sponsored casking guys and asked them, what is this? And they said, well, you set the dial to the number of whatever pound line you put on your reel. And this way you never forget. Oh my God. I mean, who needed that? Okay. And... I know some of you will say, well, Victor, why do you care? You know, it's better to have it than not to have it. Well, that's only true if you don't calculate opportunity costs, okay? And economically, everything has costs. This thing has a lot of parts, you know? If you look at it inside, it has a lot of parts. I mean, it costs some money to put this dial on this reel. I don't know how much it costs, maybe $1, maybe $2 of cost, but $2 of cost are $5 MSRP. So would you rather have this meaningless dial or 
have the reel for $10 less. Okay, let me put it this way. Let's talk about the clutch. Deep travel. Very pleasant, very smooth, and at the same time crisp clutch, okay? Definitely far nicer clutch than on the Dio Alexa, which depressing it down, okay, comes out smooth, but depressing it, I don't feel where, where exactly was the critical point after which uh, the, the, the clutch feels depressed. I, the Alexa doesn't have a good clutch and I wouldn't use it to cast all day let's say musky wars because I just don't enjoy this clutch but that's not what I use it and I don't care about much about this clutch here but the Abu I have to say very similar clutch okay very similar but the Abu clutch is a little bit deeper and even a little bit nicer but, so, I would say the best clutch, I would give 10 out of 10 on the Abu, 9 out of 10 on the Casking, and maybe 7 or 6 out of 10 on the clutch on the Daiwa, but nevertheless, excellent clutch. Okay, just a pleasure to, to click this thing all day. So, if you use this, not for catfish, but for casting, whatever, striper wars or musky wars, this thing is awesome. It does have drainage ports like the Daiwa, but you know, instead of this stupid dial, I much prefer they put this little thing here like on the all of the abos. I don't know if they have patents and that's why they can't do it, but this cannot cost a lot of money. But look how easy it is to remove the screw and put some grease on your main gear and by extension on the pinion gear. Removing the side plate, if you want to mess with the brakes, see it says open and close, it's not very easy, you know, you have to turn this thing to open first, okay, and then the side plate comes off, but I don't know, it turns kind of difficult and the process is not smooth, and inside, you know, centrifugal brake, like on all other centrifugal brake reels, the same like on the Lexa. But the Abu has a magnetic brake. And on these big reels, where you're casting something huge and brake performance is, is not that critical because you have a big weight. I think magnetic brakes are the way to go just because you can adjust them externally and they're quieter, okay? With magnetic brakes, you don't have any friction, okay? And I can just move this and, and adjust it. I usually give a lot of brake. I don't mess around, okay? Even for this reel, I put the brakes on three and never touch them, okay? And I have to tell you right now, this reel casts beautifully. Uh, a lot better caster than the Abu. A lot better cast. Abu is just, I mean, the bearings of the Abu when it was brand new, they were full of some very thick grease. And I never cleaned it because the reel was so smooth that I prefer to have grease for protection than, you know, cast far. But anyway, I always, you know, go on these tangents. But Abu is not a good caster. The Daiwa Alexa is a pretty good caster, but I think of the three reels, this one casts the best. One of the reasons for the nice casting, in my opinion, is the disengaging uh, line guide, okay? On the Abu, it's also disengaging. But the Abu doesn't have nice bearings, or it does, but they're full of grease and I refuse to clean them. This one, uh, however, has, uh, look, non-disengaging line guide. And on top of that, it has very fast oscillation on the line guide. 
which is why this line guide is so lousy and noisy and I just much prefer disengaging line guide I even believe it or not when I'm gonna cast but that's because I don't cast lures okay I cast once every 30 minutes but before I cast I always make sure my line guide is close to the middle of the spool and then when you cast with a disengaged line guide, just everything is, is quieter and smoother because you don't need to have everything spinning uh, inside the reel uh, with the spool. So I much prefer that, okay? The line lay on the spool is pretty good. You know, it's funny the, the capacity of this spool, Casking says 14 whatever 230 yards of 14 pound mono or the same distance of 50 pound braid and this is 50 pound braid Daiwa J braid by the way the gray color matches perfectly with this reel super strongly recommended but this 50 pound braid if you look at the line lay the line lay doesn't reach all the way to the right nor all the way to the left which is not really an issue of the, of the oscillation system, but the line is a little bit thin. If that was 65 pound braid, it would reach the, the sides of the spool. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you want a perfect line lay, you're gonna need a really strong braid, like 65 pound, or with mono, you're gonna need, I think, like 20 pound mono or something like this. Depends, you know, from brand to brand. But you're gonna need some thick line to reach the both sides of the spool. Otherwise, the spool does have like little diamonds in the middle to create a lot of, you know, drag and friction. So you can spool braid directly onto the spool without mono and it's not gonna slip. I can do this to, to any spool uh, with, with a good knot, but, but anyway, I don't want to go there either. And Casking does advertise this spool as braid ready. When it comes to internals, when you look at the size of this huge gearbox, you can already kind of imagine and size the main gear, okay? And when you open it, it does not disappoint. Uh, the main gear is 38 millimeters in diameter and is just huge. And as a matter of fact, it is much bigger than the gears of any of these round uh, uh, ambassador reels from, from Abu Garcia that are 65, even 7,000 size. These reels that look bigger and people perceive as strong uh, actually don't have big gears. Uh, even the catfish one, uh, it is the same thing, just says catfish and painted orange. Uh, even the catfish one doesn't have big gears. This capstan reel uh, will have bigger gears than those uh, round reels. Of course, with bigger main gear, you also get uh, big uh, drag washers. And uh, Casking uh, says that the reel comes with three, you know, carbon uh, fiber drag washers. And indeed, uh, the, the drag washers inside are carbon fiber. But as big as they look, they are actually smaller. Uh, th this uh, I can confirm. They are actually smaller than the Daiwa Lexa and the Abu. But even if they are slightly smaller than the Daiwa and the Abu, uh, these are still three enormous, uh, genuine carbon uh, fiber washers. And uh, I will share my impressions later from the drag, but the, the drag on the reel is, is, is really good. The anti-reverse clutch of the reel uh, the, uh, is uh, double shielded, as you can see. And uh, it, it felt really heavy in uh, in my hand. I'm, I'm used to the plastic uh, anti-reverse clutches of the Daiwa reels and uh, this one, I have to admit, it looks pretty good. 
It is uh, shielded and it feels heavy, which I like. Overall, I have to say, uh, the components of the reel do look uh, pretty high quality to me. Here are the rest of the internals. Uh, feel free to pause this and, you know, uh, study it. But, uh, yeah, you have three bearings on the spool, as in most reels. Uh, but you have two bearings that support, uh, support the main gear. There is another bearing on top of the clutch. Okay, that not all reels have. Uh, the warm shaft has a bearing on one side, but bushing on the other. And these are the six kind of bearings inside the reel, plus uh, the anti-reverse clutch. And the other two bearings are actually in the knobs. Okay guys, I think I went over all of the components and let me finally give you my impressions of how the reel actually fishes on the water and compare with the competition and give you my recommendations, okay? Let me say right away that for two months of uh, not just fishing but playing with the reel, opening it inside, uh, I did not find anything wrong with the reel and not only that but I don't even have any criticisms of the reels okay I'm not fan of the knobs but that's a personal thing and like I said most cast king customers will prefer the thick knobs but the reel is super smooth okay in terms of smoothness okay and you have to separate you know smoothness from the other things but in terms of smoothness i do not see a difference between this casking the daiwa the abu and i don't know maybe the yoga shrapnel is i don't know a little bit smoother to me this is not important don't get hung around these things this reel is really, really smooth when you just cast or when you reel under pressure, okay? The, I feel the contact. I, I did catch a couple of carp. I did catch a 15-pound catfish. I, I got quite a few smaller catfish and smaller carp. And I was reeling some pretty heavy weights anyway. Even under load, the gears always remain smooth. Okay, you will enjoy fighting fish with this reel. Uh, it is a good fish. It casts great, like I already said. Uh, it is the best caster of... I think of all of these. I think this reel casts better than the Rayoga Shrapnel. It really does. Okay. Um, the Shrapnel doesn't have good line lay. Look at this line lay. But anyway, uh, casting is really good. Oh, the clicker, I forgot to show you the clicker. The clicker is so loud, it's a little bit... Okay, the sound is a little bit obnoxious and if you fall asleep and you can suddenly hear it, 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 it creates unpleasant uh, impression. I wish the, the sound was nicer. But it is very loud and I don't hold this against the reel either. And uh, it is louder than the, here is for comparison, the Daiwa Alexa. I don't know. This one is also loud, but it sounds more refined. In one aspect though, it slightly lacks to the Daiwa and a little bit more to the abu okay so the reel does have plastic frame even though you know with the line right now it weighs 12 ounces and the daiwa alexa with line both of them weigh right now exactly 12 ounces okay the abu is a little bit heavy it's 14 ounces but uh yeah plastic weighs the same as a full aluminum frame but I don't know if it's because of the plastic. I mean, the reel does feel very solid in your hand. And if you never compare with these reels, 
if somebody says, you know, this reel is solid as a rock, I will believe him. But if you do compare it with a real rock, like this Abu Rivo Toro S, this is a real rock, okay? This is, um, it feels like the reel is not made of aluminum, but of a rock. This thing is solid as a tank. This reel, Abu Rivo Toro S, is every bit as solid, I said in my other review, as the Daiwa Rayoga Shrapnel. Every bit as solid, every bit as smooth. Just five bearings. This is how good this reel is, okay? So, in smoothness, yeah, they are the same, but when you reel under pressure, this thing feels, this thing feels more solid. Okay, this thing feels as everything is one piece. This one is still solid. It's still amazing. Like I said, if you don't have expensive reels, you will never tell the difference. But feels, I don't know, maybe just a little bit more flex somewhere. I don't know how to describe it, but definitely more solid feeling from the Abu. And even the Daiwa Lexa, I have to say, it does feel a little bit more solid as well, okay? So overall, as far as I'm concerned and surprised, Casking made a really solid reel, guys. Okay, this reel will fight anything in fresh water. I think with this reel, I will catch a hundred pound catfish as long as there is no current and whatever, snacks and stuff, but in open water, why not? I can probably catch some sharks too, as long as they're in open water. This thing has the gears, it has the bearings, it has the stainless steel a main shaft, a plastic frame, you know, the frame is so thick, I mean, the reel is heavy, uh, it is still sturdy enough. The reel has no flaws as far as I'm concerned, except one, okay? And that flaw is the price, and the price is why, even though I really like this reel, I find it very difficult to recommend it over these two particular reels, okay? Because, okay, if you buy this reel on the Casking website, it's $120. But on Amazon, it's $130. And, okay, given my history with Casking, you may get a bad apple and you may need to ship it back. This reel is pretty heavy. With this heavy box, if you have to ship it back to Casking and you pay your own shipping, you're out 10, 12 bucks, okay? So, I don't know. If you want to take your chances with Casking, buy it from them and save the 10 bucks. They do offer free shipping. But it might be better to just buy it from Amazon and get free return uh, and Amazon protection if you don't like it and, and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it is $130 on Amazon. And it may be still worth the price, the $130, actually. It, it is that good of a reel. But the problem is, the Daiwa Lexa is, I don't know, depending of which uh, version you're interested in, right or left hand, or... But it's like, the, the cheapest one I, I found was $137. So just $7 more than the casking. And it comes with a aluminum frame. And it comes with a nicer handle. And the damn clicker sounds nicer. And the reel looks a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more Japanese. And, uh, you know, one day you, you're going to want to sell your reel and upgrade. You can sell a three-year-old Daiwa for, I don't know, half the price. I don't know. I, I don't want to go there, but old, used Japanese reels have very high resale value. How much are you going to get for a three-year-old casting? I mean, who's going to take it even for free? 
okay so is this real really cheaper seven dollars or is it 30 40 uh, more expensive seven dollars or is it actually 30 to 40 dollars cheaper than the casking if you calculate the resale the resale value so this is the problem with the casking okay it is a great reel the price is not bad at 130 dollars but these old reels have the price have come down so much you can even get the one if you're catfishing with the line counter for 140 dollars okay with the line counter so i personally cannot recommend the casking over the lexa if you can get the lexa for 140 dollars this abu rivo toro s used to be at 240 250 dollar reel but because it's an old model you can find plenty of discounts on this reel and it's well south of 200 dollars on ebay but actually today you can go on abu garcia's own site and they have a sale on this reel and you can get it for 159 dollars okay again 130 dollars on amazon for casking or 159 for this abu and this abu okay doesn't have a clicker fatal flaw but if you are bumping you know you constant you don't use clicker uh, if you're bumping for catfish if you're casting you know these big umbrella rigs for striper or you know these huge six ounce uh, lures for musky you don't need a clicker either uh, and the reel, I mean, out, out of these three reels, if I have to fight a trophy catfish, I would pick this reel. I mean, it just feels a little bit better than these two, okay? It, it feels, you have to play with a fish with this reel to, to appreciate it and to understand why, even though it says five bearings, it costs $250. It is the best reel uh, among these three okay however if we take these two particular reels aside all of a sudden this reel even at hundred and thirty dollars because uh, becomes my third recommendation okay I would recommend this reel at hundred and thirty bucks over any of these variations and I really don't care these reels have many names Abu Garcia alone sells 10 versions of this reel they sell the catfish the striper the ambassador the c3 the c4 they're all overrated and very overpriced they have small gears most of them don't have a thumb bar they have a 15 piece frame and they all rattle, okay? Uh, this casking capstan reel at $130 is a better value than any of those reels. So that's it guys, for those of you that survived all the way uh, to the end through boredom and whatnot, thanks for watching. Casking did make a really good reel, okay? And the only problem with this reel is the price is a little bit high, but this is Casking, not Shimano. You will probably find this reel on sale, on some kind of promotions later. If you see, see this reel under 100 bucks, just go get it, okay? Under 100 bucks, go for it, buy a pair, buy four of them, six of them, you know, tool your entire boat with this, it is a reliable reel.